Hi, my name is Stefan Wintermeyer. This is my talk, The Greener Grass. I pre-recorded this talk two days ago to be on a safe side. You can reach me all the time via Twitter at Wintermeyer or after the talk for a Q&A session in the conference tool. So this is the first time for me doing an online conference. I'm trying to put their image where it fits best or I remove it whenever the slide is more important. I'm going to talk about Ruby versus Elixir or Ruby or Elixir and spoiler alert, it's not going to be a technical decision. I actually deleted like 20 slides which discuss technical stuff like OTP and the history of Erlang and stability and yada yada yada. And I came up to the point where I said, okay, if this would be a technical decision, it would be an easy decision. And that would be a decision one could do for all the programming languages. But those decisions are not technical decisions. It's not like this programming language is faster or easier to maintain. It's more like, do I have the, the knowledge? What about my team? Do we have an existing code base? So this all comes together and then you have to make that call. So we all know Ruby, this is a Ruby conference. Most of us have heard about Elixir, a couple probably have worked with it. And um, I'm going to dive right into it. So first I want to tell you a little bit about my history. My first commercial web page was in 1997. I used to sell scuba diving trips uh, via that web page. And my first online shop was on that web page. It was a hotel prices, which got the prices from a database. And I used Ball and Delphi for, to do that. Um, in those days, I still used Windows. That was Windows uh, 3.11. And uh, Ball and Delphi had some library to um, create some sort of web server, um, which was dynamic. So I used that. Since then, I um, developed quite a bit. So that was my last Windows version I, I ever used. Um, after that, I switched to Linux and I started to use Perl as my main language for web-related web stuff. Then came PHP. And don't get me wrong, I love Perl. It's, it was super dirty. Um, debugging old Perl code is always a nightmare, but it was fun at the time. And then came PHP, uh, which was fun too, and which was super easy to deploy. Still today, I think most advantage of PHP is easy deployment. Uh, we all know how hard deployment can be for Rails. Um, same goes for Elixir or for Phoenix. Uh, PHP is just super easy to deploy. But then uh, in about 2005, um, I saw the 15-minute um, blog video of um, DHH. And um, that just blew me away. Um, I started Ruby and Rails right then. Uh, it took me a couple of steps. Like It didn't appreciate the whole idea right away. But um, after a time, I really saw the strengths of the framework and the advantage of not having to reinvent all the wheels by myself. And that was a major push. Um, I've been using Rails ever since. Um, wrote a couple of books about them and um, I, I really love Rails. And I really love Ruby too. And then a couple of years ago, I saw Elixir and I tried that. And um, after, again, uh, in the beginning, I it was not like love on first sight. But um, after a time, it made click. And since then, I'm, I'm a big Elixir fan too. The biggest pain in changing the programming languages has always been changing the programming paradigm for me. 
like Delphi, Perl, PHP, different programming languages, but same idea, same programming paradigm. Ruby introduced me to object oriented, which was a step at the time. But Elixir introduced me to functional programming, and that was that was, that was a big, big step. Uh, that's a steep learning curve coming from object-oriented programming. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the history of Ruby and Elixir. Ruby was published in 1995 by Yokohiro Matsumoto. Actually, he started creating it in 1993, but the first version was released at 1995. And he created it for developers' happiness. And Ruby is a joy to use. It's it's, it's just a, it's a wonderful programming language, uh, very easy to use, and um, I, I I love it. It's it's uh, no way around it. I love it. In 2011, Jose Valim created Elixir because. He had a um, real concurrency problem with Ruby, which Ruby couldn't solve for him. So he looked around, he he, he, he did work a little bit with, um, with Erlang before, so he already knew the OTP, which is like the core of the whole Erlang ecosystem. And um, he figured out that it would be possible to create a new programming language which uses OTP, um, but which is easier than Erlang. And um, he took a couple of syntax ideas from um, Ruby and um, created this new programming language. So to give you an idea how it looks like, this is a very uh, basic example. Um, I stole it from that um, blog post on uh, Saltboard, um, which discusses this uh, Elixir for Rubyists. And, and this um, example shows you how to um, titleize a string. So on the left side, you see the Ruby code, uh, which is a chain of methods. And on the right side, you see the Elixir code. And obviously, it's a functional programming language. So these are all functions. And um, the pipe symbol in the beginning is the synthetic sugar so that you can pipe the result of one function into the next function as the first parameter. And um, that's pretty easy to read. But don't let the easy to read Elixir syntax fool you into believing it's painless to learn. It is not. It is a totally different ball game. It's a very, very steep learning curve. Um, it's it's not easy at all. It's it's beautiful. It's 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 a, it's a beautiful language. It's a, it's such a joy to use it, but in the beginning, it's a lot of pain to learn it. And for people like me who have to switch between Elixir and Ruby, for me personally, switching back and forth results in technical jet lag. So I have a hard time to do a Ruby pro project in the morning and an Elixir project in the afternoon. I prefer to stick to um, one programming language um, doing for a couple of days uh, because switching back and forth is not easy. So we all know about R Ruby. This is a Ruby conference. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about Elixir and what do people do with Elixir? Um, probably most of the Ruby guys have never seen um, this um, project, which is called NERVS. It's a um, system to create and deploy um, embedded software, firmware, which uses Elixir as a programming language. So it builds firmware to be deployed on Raspberry Pis, BeagleBones, or generic x86. And it is astonishing. And one example is um, the FarmBot, which uses NERVs as um, the core. So um, the images are deployed and um, uh, installed uh, via the internet 
on, onto the farm bot and you can pro program it, it's open source. So that's a very interesting project. And it contains this uh, embedded system. Actually, it contains two embedded systems. Uh, one is customized and one is a Raspberry Pi. But uh, let's face it, most times the discussion Elixir versus Ruby is a discussion Rails versus Phoenix. Phoenix framework being the Rails framework for Elixir. Um, it was created by Chris McCord and um, it's just a mind-blowing um, framework to use. The fun fact here is that all major players all have a very deep history with Ruby and Rails. So Jose Valim, who created Elixir, um, used to um, publish uh, very popular uh, Ruby gems. Uh, Chris McCord uh, was a very uh, visible Ruby and Rails developer too. And obviously DHH, um, uh, David uh, created Ruby and Rails. But those are all it also all have very deep roots in the Ruby and Rails community. So um, the Ruby on Rails doctrine says optimize for programmer happiness. And that always gets me thinking. Um, I have been very unhappy and, and had very frustrating times with um, some gems which were out of date and which haven't been maintained or um, upgrading like are in the old days upgrading rates um, software um, was a nightmare um, it got so much better but it used to be a real nightmare um, and then upgrading ruby versions etc etc so i have had very very unhappy um, times with, um, with with ruby and ruby and rates and i have had very happy times with phoenix so the whole optimize for programmer happiness, I don't know, it's, um, it, it's not an easy self to me. And the Phoenix web uh, framework says, build rich interactive web applications quickly with less code and fewer moving parts. And that gets me thinking, yeah, but I've done that same with, with, with Rails. It's not like um, I can't do rich interactive web application with Rails. Um, so, same here, uh, I understand the argument, but it's not like black and white. Um, you can do many things with both frameworks. So let's go back to that 50 minute um, YouTube video, 50 minute blog YouTube video I told you. Um, David published that in 2005 and that was just mind blowing because it showed you um, the, the idea of Ruby and Rails, the idea of active records. Um, it was not as mature as today. For example, you had to open your MySQL editor to um, create and um, uh, manipulate the tables in the database manually. Uh, there were no migrations then. But the whole idea was already there. And that, that video was just mind blowing and um, uh, super important. Um, thing for the whole Ruby and Rails community. Um, so Ruby and Rails, um, how does it do today with the same thing? Um, we have this five lines of code we need for, for a blog, like Rails new, my blog, we CD into that, we do a Rails G scaffold, which creates a whole scaffolding, uh, Rails DB migrate, Rails server, and that's it. And yes, I know the code on the screenshot here on the photo, that's not Ruby and Rails. Please excuse that. Um, after that, you can uh, fire up the server and um, you can exit it on port 3000 on your local host. Uh, fun fact, um, I um, had a look um, by doing this slide. Um, in a current Ruby and Rails installation, this application, which is very, very super basic, already has shy of 20,000 files. So we moved quite away from 2005 to today. This is a typical uh, code for uh, the create method um, for in the post controller. Um, so it's easy to read, um, uh, very uh, clear and um, what we all expect from Rails. So this is just a, 
a small demo what this Rails application is looking like. So we create a title, we add a title, we add a body, and then we create a post. We can go back to the index, we can do a destroy and an OK. And let's see how that works on Phoenix. So it's easy, but it's not as easy. Um, you can see uh, the mix phx.new, that's kind of the Rails new thing. So mix is kind of, you can compare to Rake. It's more powerful, but it's the same basic concept. Um, but then you have to menu, uh, manually uh, configure the database, uh, which is kind of a hassle. And it doesn't support uh, SQLite, uh, which is, in my opinion, a big win for Rails, uh, because in Rails you can easily create a very basic application without even having a database there. Um, or uh, you have a database, SQLite is a database, but like MySQL or MariaDB or Postgres. Um, and then you do a mix actor create, which creates a database. Um, you run the uh, scaffolding generator. Um, you have to add a resource manually. Um, that would be done by uh, the Rails generator automatically. Uh, you do a an, an, uh, migration and then you fire up the server with mix phx.server. And then your application is available on port 4000 um, on your local machine. And here's the uh, create function. Obviously, it's a function. It's not a method because we are uh, having a function programming language. And you see, it's pretty easy to understand too. So uh, if you know Rails and you are familiar with the whole concept, then you have an idea what this does here, even without knowing any Alex here. So let's have a look how this works out. Um, so uh, I do the same thing. Um, as I did with uh, a race application, I uh, enter a title and um, a body, save everything, go back to the index view, delete it. It looks a little bit uh, nicer. So the CSS is a bit nicer, uh, the default CSS, but that's just, uh, that's, 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 um, visual sugar. So uh, that's, 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 it can be done with Rails too. Uh, the defaults are just a bit nicer here. Uh, for those who are familiar with Phoenix, um, this is an old video, uh, which I recorded last year. Uh, if I had done the same thing this year, uh, it would look like this here um, with the live dashboard on um, the right corner of the navigation bar. And let's um, click on that to see what the live dashboard does. Um, here you have a, a dashboard on a, of the live system of your current node. And if you're running Phoenix on a cluster, which is very easy and which is one of the big, big advantages of, of uh, Phoenix or of Elixir in total, um, that you can run it easily on a cluster, uh, you can have a look on all the nodes of that cluster, um, how they are working. You can debug the whole system and it's all built in. So you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to install everything, anything. Uh, it's right there. Um, so very useful um, for production systems and for de uh, de uh, development systems. So in my opinion, one of the biggest questions is always how big is the community? Because you could have the greatest programming language on the world. If you would be the only programmer for that, that wouldn't help you at all. So it's always how many other people are using the same thing. And one aspect of that is you can count the followers on Twitter. And I, I had a look um, for uh, David and for Chris, and that's quite a difference. It's not, um, it's not fair, uh, the comparison, because uh, David does a lot of other stuff too, like he has Basecamp, he has now Hay, uh, he's a race car driver, um, so um, he has a bigger audience, um, but uh, still the uh, comparison is, is, is pretty stark here. Uh, Chris has 16,000 uh, followers and uh, David has um, over 400,000 followers, so that tells a lot. Um, same picture at Stack Overflow. Uh, Ruby and Rails has more than 300,000 questions. Phoenix has 
um, three and a half thousand questions. Of course, that's unfair too because Ruby on Rails is um, a lot older, so uh, it has a big advantage here, uh, age-wise. Um, the GitHub contributors are interesting in my opinion because um, they show that um, Phoenix has a lot of momentum right now. So the contrast here is not as big and um, the, the numbers show that many, many uh, people are um, dipping their toe uh, into the Phoenix water right now and uh, becoming part of the community. So what are the biggest USPs in my opinion for Phoenix? The biggest one probably is stability, which I didn't include here, but to be honest, stability, I've never had a stability problem with Rails either. I had problems like upgrading Ruby versions or upgrading gems, but obviously I wouldn't do that on a production system uh, before testing it. So um, it, had a, it had never been a problem for me for stability on a production system. But um, Elixir and the whole um, OTP idea is just super performance because it comes from the um, telecom industry and they're used to have like 99,999999 whatever availability. Um, so uh, those systems are up all the time. So they are super stable. Uh, for me, the biggest USP right now for Phoenix is uh, performance, it's speed. It's just super fast. Then it's very easy to scale. Um, you start with one node and if, if that's not enough, you, you add another one, another one, another one, and that's just that's a no-brainer because it's all built into the OTP idea. It's easy to scale, uh, no heather. Um, then it's a high availability system, again, availability. And one of the major things I like is uh, you can do hot deployments. Uh, you can do a hot deployment on a production system. And everybody who uses Rails on big production systems knows that deployment itself is a nightmare. Hot deployment with Rails, that's just a super nightmare. Um, and uh, that's just easy to do with, with, with Elixir. And yes, I know um, Heroku does a great job with that, but Heroku is very expensive too. If you have a big installation, uh, then Heroku is a very expensive um, hosting option for you. So um, I looked up a couple of numbers and I came up on um, about this um, medium post of um, this guy. Actually, he, he lives in Germany, I think. And um, he wrote, Phoenix has delivered 15 times better performance than Rails um, for one figure of his whole comparison. Um, I think 15 times is a bit on the higher end. Uh, my average experience is like 10 times better. Uh, it's always faster, always. In any situation, Phoenix is faster or LXC is faster. But in general, um, it's about 10 times faster. So now the big question, what should I use? What should you do use? I have three important points here. If performance is paramount, then it's no question. Then you have to use Elixir, you have to use Phoenix because it's just so much more fa uh, faster. It, it, it just, uh, there's no question. If your team doesn't have much Ruby knowledge yet or doesn't have Ruby knowledge at all, then that's easy too. Then just use Phoenix because you have to you have to learn another programming language. Then you can start with a faster one, with a, probably the better one. Um, so that's an easy call too. And for all other cases, so if you already have a team which knows very uh, knows Ruby very very good, or you have a big code base um, which is Ruby, uh, etc., stick with Ruby. Um, there's no need to change. If you're already happy with your current code base, um, just stick with it. Because uh, if you reinvent everything, um, that's uh, that's a big, big challenge. Um, and it will cost you a lot of time and money. Jan von Tetschner, uh, who invented um, the Opera browser, um, told me some 20 years ago, um, a bad programmer can write 
a slow program in assembler and a good programmer can write a fast program in visual basic and that just stick with me um, so obviously you can write faster code in Elixir, but um, it, it depends on, on your knowledge as a programmer too so you can write slow code in Elixir. There's no problem about that um, so you always want to um, be the best in your programming language um, and to achieve the best there so that's the end for this talk um, however you decide if you do elixir in the future or stick with ruby um, just to, to do your best um, don't just tr try it and and and, and 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 if if you if the first time if the first step arrives uh, stop there uh, do your best um, it is going to be a, a tough transition uh, functional programming is not easy if you are coming with the, with the object oriented background um, so expect a steep learning curve there and um, otherwise just stick with ruby uh, stick with Rails. It's a wonderful community. It's a wonderful programming language. Um, so uh, you can make a mistake there either. So thank you for having me. Um, this has been a great experience. Um, I love this conference. Um, I hope um, that in the future um, we see each other at the live event. And um, I'm looking forward uh, for um, questions in the Q&A session. And um, if you uh, have questions in the future, just write me an email or contact me on Twitter. Thank you. Bye.